I'm here today on a beautiful day in Santiago at Izo, Chile headquarters with Yuri Zak, who is a Izo postdoctoral, actually you're a doctoral candidate visiting from Izo headquarters, European Southern Observatory headquarters from Garking, Germany. And you've been here how long? Uh, two and a half months. Two and a half months, uh, perfect timing. Weather is great. Uh, and we've been discussing the search for dormant stellar mass black holes. And you actually wrote a paper, I believe last year, that you had a candidate, but, it, but you ruled it out in the paper. That's uh, right. So why, first of all, what is a dormant stellar mass black hole? And why are they important for astrophysics? Uh, so uh, dormant stellar mass black holes are black holes that have a mass up to, let's say, 100 of solar masses. And dormant me means they are not actively accreting uh, gas, so we do not detect any hard radiation from them like uh, gamma or x-ray. And the uh, importance is uh, from our stellar evolution models we believe there should be several uh, uh, tens of thousands of dormant black holes throughout our, our galaxy, but we have not uh, detected one with a high confidence. All the stellar mass black holes that we know of are in a system that ac actively ac accrete and hence the quest for a search of a dormant black hole still continues. And why is uh, the search for stellar mass black holes important but to astrophysics? You, you said so, because, partly because it will inform what we know about exoplanets. Also that, but the, f the first is to confirm our stellar evolution models, but as you mentioned, there's also a big overlap with uh, exoplanet uh, study, as we use uh, stellar evolution models to, to, co to detect exoplanets and derive uh, precise uh, parameters of exoplanets. And how, how so? Can you explain? So exactly. to, op to obtain a radius of an uh, exoplanet, we need to know the uh, radius of the host star. And we, we use uh, stellar evolution models to obtain the radius of the host star. But to date, we, don't, we have two strong candidates for, that we think are possibly uh, stellar mass black holes, both detected by the European Space Agency's Gaia mission. They're called BH1 and BH2 but it's a little bit too soon to say there are actual de detected uh, confirmed black holes i mean because we we're waiting for that a little bit yes uh, so they are very promising candidates and we are looking forward to more uh, observations but there have been several uh, similar uh, discoveries in the past where the where the discoveries were later rebutted but these are looking very promising and we are excit excited to see more more observations of these systems. And then there's one last thing which uh, people who are students of science fiction, so if you were cruising along in a Star Trek type uh, starship um, and you came a and you happened to be out cruising in a pretty much a empty part of the galaxy, um, you're telling me that if you had that kind of technology, you would not just run into the black hole. <laughs> that, that, that first of all, uh, that the black holes would, the, the chances that they would be that isolated is, is kind of a, not, is non-zero, Yes, but so it's not very likely. Yes, Explain so what you were telling me. Yeah, yeah. So in Prince, if we would be in uh, space, we could still see the gravitational effect of the black hole. But even in the case that it would be very isolated black holes, we could still uh, detect the black hole using uh, microlensing because it, we would still see the effects of that. But there's one last thing you mentioned: a hundred mass, a uh, hundred solar mass black hole. That would be a population three star. That would be a black hole from the earliest stars in the. Uh, that's that's hard to say. It could be several formation channels of such a, of such a star. But the, the li limit is not really hundred. Ninety nine point nine is a is stellar mass black hole, and hundred and one is intermediate. But it's more like a, a definition limit, probably. Right. 
But typically, these uh, stellar mass black holes that you are searching for and your colleagues are ser ser searching for are basically uh, stellar mass black holes that form from O, B, and A stars, or, or O and B stars, the, the largest, most massive star, hot blue stars in the, in yes, the galaxy. Yes. Okay. But it could also be because of the mass transfer of a different spe st stellar type. So there are several possible formation channels of stellar mass black holes. But the interesting thing is about all of this is that even though it doesn't see that these stellar mass black holes would be important uh, for understanding the prevalence of extrasolar planets or potentially life in our galaxy, they because of how they would affect the stellar evolution models, they are important. It's yes, not just it's an esoteric thing that you're out looking for <laughs> dormant stellar mass black holes, correct? Exactly. There's a lot of overlap with exoplanets, but also the evolution of the galaxy and then the uh, stellar evolution models. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Ziri. Uh, we appreciate your time and good luck with your search. Thank you.